While we all got slightly poorer during this pandemic and some of us even lost their jobs, billionaire Jeff Bezos earned $35 billion and now has a net worth of $180 billion. If that seems unreal to you, then you clearly haven't heard about the richest people in history. Bezos might be the richest person today, but if you compare him to the wealthiest people in history, his net worth is peanuts compared to some of them. Let's start with number 7, Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie led the expansion of the American steel industry in the late 19th century and became one of the richest Americans in history. Carnegie founded the United States Steel Corporation that still operates today, but back then it was named Pittsburgh Carnegie Steel Company. He started as a telegraph boy, literally from nothing, but through hard work and an exceptional sharp mind, he quickly grew in ranks and started building his fortune. He heavily invested in the railroad, bridges, oil derricks and so on. At the height of his power, his net worth crossed $300 billion adjusted to inflation, which is almost double the amount of the richest man today. However, he was behind his main rival, who is at number 6. John Rockefeller The wealthiest American of all time, born into a low-income family and barely made ends meet, planned since childhood to become super rich. He was disciplined and sharply focused on his goal. During the crude oil revolution, he built a refinery, but he wanted to expand his empire to all over the world. He started buying other refineries that were struggling financially. He would purchase them, change their business models, and turn them into profitable businesses. He kept doing that for years. In a matter of few decades, he built a complete monopoly over the industry, where he controlled over 95% of the crude oil market. His net worth, if adjusted to inflation, would be around $400 billion. That's four times Bill Gates' net worth. Rockefeller also gained enormous influence over the railroad industry, which transported his oil around the country. Since he was their major client, he could set the price that no other oil refinery could. Unfortunately for him, in 1911, the Supreme Court ruled that his company Standard Oil is a monopoly and must be broken into many different companies. To be more precise, into 34 separate entities which included companies that became ExxonMobil, Chevron Corporation, and others, some of which still have the highest level of revenue in the world. Individual pieces of the company were worth much more, as shares of these doubled and tripled in value in their early years. Consequently, Rockefeller became the country's first billionaire with a fortune worth 2% of the national economy. His peak net worth was estimated at around $418 billion. I personally can't even imagine that kind of wealth, but the next billionaire on this list is even wealthier. Nikolai II of Russia As recently as a hundred years, there was still a country called the Russian Empire, and the last emperor of Russia was Nikolai II. Before the Bolshevik Revolution, the Tsar of Russia was considered to be one of the richest people in the world, if not in history. His personal net worth was around $400 billion, but it was quite difficult to separate his personal net worth from the wealth of the empire, since his family, the Romanovs, have been ruling Russia for over 400 years. And the wealth of the royal family kept increasing for generations to the point where it wasn't easy to distinguish between what belonged to the state and what was owned by the royal family. However, that model of wealth proved to be unsustainable, since the country overall was extremely poor and at some point they overthrew the Tsar and established a socialist government that we know as the Soviet Union today that also didn't last that long. At number 4, we have King Akbar I. Akbar was the emperor of the Mughal Empire that included current-day India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and a few other neighboring countries. He was known as the Akbar the Great. When you have the title Great on your name, you must have accomplished a few things, such as expanding your empire's limit. 
However, his power and influence extended over the entire subcontinent because of Mughal's military, political, cultural and economic dominance. To unify the vast Mughal state, Akbar established a centralized system of administration throughout his empire and adopted a policy of conciliation conquered rulers through marriage and diplomacy. We're not sure how much exactly his net worth was, but many historians estimate it to be in trillions since empire was rich and flourishing under his rule. And he was probably the sole owner of the entire empire, some went as far as estimating his net worth at 21 trillion dollars, which I think is a bit of exaggeration. Do you still think that Jeff Bezos is rich enough? Emperor Shenzong of Song I'm probably mispronouncing that. The Song Dynasty ruled China for a few centuries. During the reign of Shenzong, the country was in peace and prosperity. According to experts, China made 30% of the global GDP back then, which equaled to $30 trillion in 2019 dollars. It might seem unreasonable to imagine that the emperor owned the entire country, but that was the case during empires. The emperor was considered pretty much the sole owner of the country. The land, the building, gold, silver and everything that was on that land belonged in some forms to the emperor of Song. How can you even separate him from the state when the law says that he can rule the empire till the end of his last days? With 30 trillion dollars net worth, he easily beats up King Akbar of India. At number 2 we have Augustus Caesar. Julius Caesar is one of the most famous historical figures ever. He was so influential that he turned the Roman Republic into an empire. Julius Caesar consolidated power, but unfortunately he couldn't live long enough to see the fruits of his labor since he was assassinated in the Senate. But his adopted son Augustus took the matters to his hands and continued the path of his father. He declared himself the first emperor of the Roman Empire and put an end to the republic that lasted almost five centuries. Of course, he also ruled the empire till the end of his days, but his personal fortune equaled to 20% of the entire emperor's economy, worth $4.63 trillion. If we take into account the wealth of the entire empire, he probably would be much wealthier. But with a $4.6 trillion net worth, it easily makes him one of the richest people in history, if not the richest if you don't take into account our next and final hero. At number 1 we have Mansa Musa, the emperor of Mali. He's often described as the wealthiest person in history because during Musa's reign, Mali may have been the largest producer of gold in the world. Musa was a devout Muslim and his pilgrimage to Mecca made him well known across northern Africa and the Middle East. His caravan consisted of 60,000 men, all wearing brocade and Persian silk including 12,000 slaves who each carried 1.8 kilograms of gold bars and heralds dressed in silks. Mansa Musa also had 80 camels traveling with him which each carried 136 kilograms of gold. On his way to Mecca, Musa gave the gold to the poor he met along his way in every city that he has crossed from Cairo to Medina. In fact, he built a mosque every Friday. Imagine traveling to a different city that's thousands of miles away and building an entire cathedral every week. People couldn't even believe that such a wealthy person even existed. They were shocked by what they have witnessed. Some reports say that because of his spendings and generous donations, he created a massive 10-year gold recession. Due to the unbelievable supply of gold, he caused hyperinflation in every city he visited significantly devalued the currency of that city, which was made out of other metals. Imagine one man having so much power that he caused hyperinflation in countries he has visited due to his lavish spendings. I mean, those billionaires today who are buying mega yachts and jets don't even come close. But no matter how rich they were, they couldn't even dream of the quality of life you have today. Mansa Musa didn't have a smartphone and couldn't enjoy watching YouTube like you are doing now. 
It took him a few months to travel from Mali to Mecca, but you can travel anywhere in the world in less than 24 hours and you don't have to spend a fortune to do that. So while they were all super rich, we are lucky to be living in the 21st century where the quality of life is far better. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here, then hit the subscribe button and the bell besides it. Thanks for watching and until next time.